In this project, we're going to fit a logistic model to some data of bacteria growing. Earlier, we fit an exponential growth model to the bacteria data and found that it was a good fit for the first 64 minutes, but after 80 minutes, it looked like the bacteria growth was slowing compared to that predicted by the exponential growth model. It turns out we have data even beyond 80 minutes. In fact, here's the chart of data gathered for 160 minutes. If we look at a graph of bacteria growth versus time, the data here is plotted by the blue points, we can see that indeed the bacteria growth is slowing down and not continuing to grow exponentially as predicted by the red pluses. In fact, it looks like the bacteria is exhausting its environment. So maybe we can fit the bacteria growth by using a logistic model. The applet further down in this page can be used to fit the logistic model to the data. However, to have more control over the program, we don't suggest that you use it as an applet embedded in a web page. Instead, it will be better to download GeoGebra to your computer and run this applet on your computer. That way you can save the changes and it will be a lot easier to use that way. If you haven't downloaded GeoGebra, you can do it by clicking on the link More Information About the Applet and then scrolling down to the link Download the GeoGebra Program and you can click on the Web Start icon to download GeoGebra. Once you have done that, you can click on this link Applet File to download the actual applet here that we've made. You can either save the file or just open it directly with Web Start, which should launch GeoGebra. Let's try it. This applet already comes with the bacteria data entered in, the same data we saw on the web page. Let me illustrate some of the ways to use this applet to fit models to the data. But first, let me enter some bogus data in here so I don't spoil the fun by showing you what the real data does. Here I made the population size start at 0.1 and increase by 0.05 in every time step. This fake data isn't going to fit any of our models, but we'll use it to illustrate the techniques. If the bacteria were exhibiting exponential growth, then we know that the change in any time step will be proportional to the population size at the beginning of the time step. This means if we plot change versus population size, the points should lie along a line through the origin. I'll show how you can use GeoGebra to make a plot of change versus population size. Let's create a new column here. We'll call it change. The change in the first time step should be the difference between the population size at time step 1 and time step 0. To use GeoGebra to calculate this change, I can type an equal sign here in cell D2, click on cell C3, which is the population size after time step 1, type a minus sign, click on cell C2, which is the population size at time step 0, and press enter it automatically calculated that the change was 0 0.05. Then we can copy the formula that we put in this cell to the rest of the column and GeoGebra will calculate all the changes for us. So we click here, we can press Control C to copy, highlight the rest of the column and hit Control V and we can see in this case the change was always 0 0.05 because I don't have real data here. Notice I didn't copy to the end of the column. If I had, if I hit Control V here, you'll notice you'll get a negative number here because it automatically puts in zero for the next time step. And so the change here would be negative 0.6. Well, that negative number is going to mess us up, so I'll be sure to delete that. I'll delete this zero here too. What we want to do is plot change versus population size. Here's a nifty way we can do this in GeoGebra. Let's give ourselves a little more room. In GeoGebra, if I enter an ordered pair in the spreadsheet, it'll automatically plot it in the graph at the left. I want to create an ordered pair, x, y, where x is the population size and y is the change. So to do that, I can type equal, open parentheses, and then click on C2, which is the population size. This is what I want for my x component. Type a comma click on what I want for my Y component, which is D2. I don't even need to type the closed parentheses. GeoGebra does it for me, and I can press Enter. 
and now I get the point 0 0.1, 0 0.05, which GeoGebra plots for me right here. I can copy this to the rest of the column by clicking Control C, highlighting the rest of the column, and pressing Control V. And now we can see it plotted change versus population size right here. It also labels them with E2 through E11, the address of these cells in the spreadsheet. If you want to get rid of those, you can highlight these points, right click it, click on Show Label to turn it off, and there you can see the points. You could also highlight the points over here and do the same thing. If you want to make it fancier, you can right click any of the points, either in the spreadsheet or in the graphics window, go to Object Properties, and you can change the color if you like, or the style of the points. If the data were exhibiting exponential growth, we'd expect these points to lie in a line through the origin. Doesn't look good for this case, but that makes sense because it's just growing steadily here. For the real bacteria growth, you should see that it does lie in a line for a while, but then it comes back down. As the growth rate should slow down as the bacteria population size gets larger and it starts to exhaust its environment. One model for population growth under the conditions where there's a carrying capacity is the logistic equation. This web page explains how if the logistic model is a good model, then if we take this population change and divide it by the population size, we should get a linear relationship between that ratio and the population size. I'll show how to check to see if this linear relationship holds. The key quantity is this change divided by population size, which we could call it the relative change. To calculate the relative change, we just need to take the ratio between column D and column C. So in F2, I could type equals, click on D2, and then divide by C2 to get the appropriate ratio. And then I can hit Control C, highlight the rest of the column, and press Control V to calculate the relative change for each time point. Then let's plot relative change versus population size. Before I do this, let's get rid of the old points. I can highlight these points, right click, and click on Show Object to hide them. And now I'm going to type a new ordered pair where the X component is the population size, so I click on C2 here, type a comma, the Y component is the relative change, F2, press Enter, copy, and paste these points to the rest of the column. Let's get rid of the label. If the data I entered were well represented by a logistic model, these points should lie along a line. Not very good here, but of course I didn't put in data that's well represented by a logistic model. To fit the logistic model, we need to know the slope and the y-intercept of this line. Imagine that these points lay along a line, and let's fit a line to this data. We can use GeoGebra to fit a line to data. It has a best fit line tool. If we click on this little arrow here, we can find the icon for best fit line. And then if we highlight the points, GeoGebra automatically calculates a line. The web page also explains how you can use the fit line command tool. You can type it right here in the input. That will do the same thing as clicking on the button we did. In fact, if I right-click the line and go to Object Properties, click on Basic, this is exactly the command you could enter in the input to create the line. Now we need to know the slope and the y-intercept of this line. Unfortunately, we can't read it off from this Properties dialog. But here's a trick we can use. If you go to the View menu and click on Algebra, it opens an algebra window, and here's our equation for the line. We can see that it's y equals negative 0.759 times x plus 0.449.
So our y-intercept here is 0 0.449, and our slope is negative 0 0.759. Once you've determined your slope and y-intercept of your fit, you can look at the web page to see how to calculate the parameters of the logistic model from these two quantities. We can also use this applet to plot the data versus time and see how well a model matches the data. Let's delete these calculations. We can create points of population size versus time index. Here I can copy down all the way to the bottom. We can't see these points in the current view, but if I hold down shift and drag the x-axis, I can shrink it like this, and get all 10 points on there. Here we get a boring straight line because I made the population size be the same at every time. Let's get rid of the point labels and make it look prettier. Then I'll go to Object Properties, turn off the labels, make them blue and larger. We can use this applet to compare the data to a prediction from a model. Let's pretend I thought this data was well fit by a logistic equation with growth rate 0 0.2 and carrying capacity 2. To check this, I would set the initial conditions to be the same as the data. And then for the remaining time points, I would calculate what the logistic equation predicts. To enter the prediction for time point 1, I would type in the logistic formula, the equation for the population at time point 1, and everywhere in the formula where it refers to the previous population size, I'll click on the cell above it, which is the population size at time point 0. The logistic model says that the population size in time point 1 would be the population size in time point 0, plus the growth rate, which I'm pretending is 0 0.2, times the population size in time point zero, times in the quantity one minus the population size in time point zero, divided by the carrying capacity, which I'm pretending here is two. And I hit enter. Then I can copy this formula to the rest of the column, and it will always refer to the previous cell, to give me the prediction from the model. Let's create points showing the model prediction. So I'm going to plot time index and then model prediction. Copy and paste that to the rest of the column. And there we have the model prediction. Not very good in this case. Let's highlight the points, change their properties, make them larger, change the style, maybe the color, get rid of the label, and there you have a nice comparison between the model prediction and the data. I hope when you do this, you have better results than I do.